What is it like being a Jamaican in St. Martin? Hi, I'm Xavier Murphy, the founder of Jamaicans.com. And today in Jamaicans to the world, I talk to Georgia Peterkin, a Jamaican living in St. Martin. Hi, Georgia. How are you? Hi, Xavier. I am fine. Thank you. And thanks for having me on your, what, our discussion, our little chat here. It's a pleasure being here with you. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Looking forward to this. A twin island. This is going to be fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, which, absolutely. Part, which part of Jamaica you come from? Um, well, I was born uh, in St. Catherine, um, schooled in Old Harbor. And then in my teenage years, I moved to Portmore, where I spent um, all my years until I came. I moved to St. Martin. Well, we're going to get into the St. Martin story in a minute, yeah. but yeah. we're in Portmore. I'm a Portmore, Morian or Portmore. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, every time somebody asks me that question, I'm like all over Portmore because why? When I just got to Portmore, I went to Westport. That is just um, adjacent Bridgeport. Then I moved to South Barrow. Then I moved to four east then i moved to four west then i did one north and then uh, daytona okay so, so you're mentioning some places that i don't even know when i when i lived in portmore i lived in edgewater and okay you could see evelyn crescent you could see right across to bridgeport to westport it was there was nothing built up during that time. So when you start talking about Daytona and this <laughs> and this sector, don't know any of it. But yeah, well, all, yeah, well, all of that is now considered Greater Portmore. Yes, and and when I go over there, I I don't even recognize the place. But hey, I've spent my formative years there. I had a lot of fun in Portmore. Fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, ironically, the last time I went there, I hardly could have recognized certain places myself because it has changed up so much. Yes, yes, it has. And uh, which which high school you say you're representing now? Old Dabber to the world. Okay. <laughs> Old Dabber High. <laughs> so so yeah. tell us the story of how you got to St. Martin. Okay, how I got to St. Martin. Um you know, I it took me one week, first of all, to 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 make the decision and 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 just put everything in place and move to St. Martin. I think I was at a, a point where I needed a change. I needed I, I needed to get away um, emotionally, um, mentally, psychologically. I was um, not stable. You know, so much was going on relational wise, and I wanted to get away. And, and, you know, and um, to refocus. And so my brother, um, his girlfriend then lives in St. Martin. So I said to him, hey, do you think, um, you know, so-and-so would, would um, allow me to stay with her? And he said, okay, let me speak with her. Because I had a choice at that time whether to go to St. Martin or return to the Bahamas where I was living with my mom. And here, I told you so. So I chose, you know what? I don't want to do that. I told you so. So I said, okay, let me see. And so she said yes. And um, within that week, I did all that I had to do, you know, make preparation, et cetera, et cetera. And I was out of Jamaica. Wow. How, how long have you lived in St. Martin? 19 years. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so tell... Tell us a little bit about the people of St. Martin. What are they like? Um, the people of St. Martin, um, how do I... Um, the, okay, so for, for starters, the culture itself is more Europeanized, you know? So, um, and of course, the, the, the Caribbean vibe is still there, but for the most part, you... you, you um, it's, it's, you feel more on the French side is like Europeanized and on the Dutch side is more Americanized, even though it's still, um, you know, Europe, um, considering that the Dutch side is a part of Holland, you know, so, um, 
It's the same. The, the the more Caribbean vibes you will get is like on the beach when you want to do your barbecue and the carnival and stuff like that. Yeah, but I'm not a carnival person, so you okay. know, yeah, the people. So, so and it's, uh, it's multicultural. It's multi. If I might add, it's highly multicultural. Okay, are are the people laid back a little bit more laid back than Jamaicans are? And I'm not meaning to stereotype everyone because it may not be that way. You know, Jamaicans, we are very hype people. We are a very hype people, you know. So yes, by far, yes. We're okay. we're hype. We are we're you know, we're upbeat, we're vibrant and, and, and all those good stuff, you know. And yes, they're but not in comparison to Jamaica. Okay. Now when people hear that you're Jamaican. What is the typical response uh, from the people in St. Martin? Okay, so most people don't believe that I'm a Jamaican. Most people, um, they don't see me as a Jamaican. They all they, they usually attribute me to a Guadeloupian or a Martinican, etc., but never a Jamaican. I don't know why. Why, why do they, they tie you to these other two islands? Um, I think maybe the way I, I, I speak or maybe the way I carry myself, my, 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 my fashion, my, my dressing, I, I believe so, um, compared to the, the majority of the Jamaican that they might, you know, um, come across or ha um, engage with. I don't know. Okay. So you have a different <laughs> a, a style that is unique that they're tied to these other islands. Yeah. Yeah. I I see. And yeah. And I will move on and talk a little bit about food. What's the food like there? And if you were to recommend a dish from St. Martin that you know Jamaicans or even or if visit viewers try, what would that be? Food. Um, as I said, because it's a multicultural um island. The average person speaks minimum two languages, the average. And I say really, really average person. So because it's multicultural, the, 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 the plate, the food is also multicultural. You know, you have the Haitian, the, 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 which is Creole. You have the Spanish. Um, uh, I mean, a wide variety. For me, what kind of food? I'm an original foodie, so you know, <laughs> and I love my Jamaican food. So I don't know. I think I think I really can't. You know what? Give I'm biased. Give me, I, one I'm, dish. I'm, I'm, yeah? Give me one dish that you'd say. Try um, this in St. Martin. Okay. Okay. A, so a it's St. Martin. Know. A foodie okay, so all over the place. They're gonna be like, I love this. I love that. <laughs> All right. To be honest, the food that I like, the local food that I that I really like is basically it's from Haiti. It's a Haitian dish, but it's very um, prevalent in Saint Martin, and it's called the um, Ré de Jonjon. Ré de Jonjon. Ré de Jonjon. So, Ré de Jonjon. Yeah, it's a Haitian rice. I really, really love it. Okay. And what so is that's the rice? Means. Just uh, rice. Is it rice with something else or just... No, so it's a rice with... You use the mushroom, the black um, mushroom you to boil. You boil the... And, and it has um, black beans in it as well or gungo peas, I think we call it. Yeah, the black one though. There's this black peas that they use to make it and with the, the mushroom and some something like cube magi, um, but it's black also. Okay. So yeah, and it tastes really good and it's highly seasoned. So nice. Yeah. Okay, so I hear you throw in some French here and some French there. How <laughs> difficult was it picking up on the language? Because it sounds like you're and you know, anything in French sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um because I wanted okay, okay. So to be open and honest, you know, my, 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 my boyfriend, you know, he's totally French. So I wanted to know everything that was going on, you know. So I decided I have to learn this language, you know, so I can know what's going on with this guy. And so I started to teach myself from the television by having my, my pencil or my pen and my book. And, you know, the television has its caption. So 
I, you know, started writing down words and making my own sentence. And then after that, maybe a year or so after that, I went to school and I did two years uh, debutant, um, um, debutant, two years of beginners and one year of intermediate. Okay. Intermediate. So that's the, the level after beginners. And um, yeah. I know you're, you're, you're perfectly fluent. <laughs> I'm not perfectly fluent, <laughs> but I, I, I do speak. Yeah. Grade yourself then from a, from a, a one to a 10 with 10 being the highest. What would you say? <laughs> five. My internet. I give me a five. Wow. You rate yourself low. Yeah. Well, I'm being honest with myself. <laughs> you know, I give me a five. <laughs> All right, you re you rate yourself low. We we leave that alone. Um, <laughs> let's let's talk a little bit about uh, on the food. Continuing on food, your fruits there. Are you seeing your your mangoes? Everything that you typically get in Jamaica, are you getting them there, or a lot don't grow? Some islands I've heard, you know, they ex they import a lot. Okay, so in St. Martin, by the way, I am in France metropolitan right now. I'm not in St. Martin. I am in France right now. Um, in in Dominica, Dominica, we, we do get mangoes from Dominica. And yes, there are some local mango trees, but it's nothing compared to Jamaica. Let me put that out there. It's really nothing compared to Jamaica. Um, sometimes I feel like I am suffering because I can't get my Jamaican mango. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, honestly, you know, I went the other day in the shop to buy some and it was, it was so expensive. I literally wanted to cry. So for the Julie mango, we do get it here. They call it um, grafted mangoes. But um, in, in, in terms of smoothness and taste and sweetness and all of that is still nothing compared to that, what we have in Jamaica. I am and I'm not being biased. I'm being honest when I say that the mangoes in Jamaica. Mm. <laughs> so, no kidding. so cost of living what is it like in saint martin and let's use this as a measure if you were to go to dinner in a medium restaurant what mm. would the cost be for that meal a one person um you, you want you're, you're going for a let's say two course fifty dollars could give you um yeah a medium okay. restaurant okay so you it, it, you would you say it's relatively medium expensive the, expensive, expensive expensive expensive, expensive. Okay. okay all right yeah fair, yeah fair, fair if, enough if you if you compare the dollar um if you want to compare the dollar um it would i would say it's expensive okay okay yeah Tell us a little bit about music. What are you hearing there? Is it uh, soca? Is it reggae? Is it French music? What are you hearing? Everything. Everything. Um, they do play Jamaican music a lot, a lot, a lot in St. Martin. Um, on the French side, you hear a lot of zouk, um, a lot of bachata, merengue. Um, you hear um, there's this um, what's this called compa, which is the Haitian music, um, very close to zouk as well, and um, yeah, but it's it's um, various types of music. Nice. But the Jamaican music is also on top there. Okay, <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, I know you said you don't participate probably in a carnival, but. Is what's the atmosphere leading up? I'm sure you're seeing the preparations and everything kind of leading up to it. Um, yes, there are a lot of preparation. However, I really do not indulge myself. I don't follow it, but I know that there are a lot of preparation. In fact, what I do know that like um, carnival is about March, April, um, you know, and when the, as soon as that is over, the preparation for the next carnival of the next year begins, wow. you know, so it, they, they really do uh, put a lot of preparation in, 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 you know, getting it leading up to the carnival. Okay. What would you say was your biggest adjustment um, moving from Jamaica and you lived in the Bahamas, you said, and, and living in St. Martin? 
Okay, so my biggest adjustment it was the language and also understanding the dialect of the people. I remember um, one of my very first um, memory, I would call it traumatic memory that turns out to be a joke was um, one day I was, you know, this guy trying to talk to me and he said, girl, and I'm like, what? Who are you talking? Excuse me? Because, you know, in Jamaica, when you refer to someone as a girl, disrespect. I'm like, who's this guy talking to? You know? And then um, I was like, you know, dialect more and, and converse more with the people. I understand that it's just their, 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 um, it's just their, 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 their tone. It's not really a disrespect. It's how they speak. So they're actually saying girl, but it's not girl, it's girl. <laughs> you know, their local thingy there. So, yeah. So, you know, get, <laughs> being getting adjusted to how they speak and understanding, you know, what they're saying, you know, was uh, my biggest challenge. All right. And, and if you don't mind me asking, what do you do in St. Martin? What do I do in St. Martin? I'm a pastor and I'm a counselor. Okay. And what areas do you specialize in in counseling? Um, I do marriage counseling. I, I basically covers all the, the aspects of counseling, marriage, um, abuse, child abuse, spousal abuse, drug abuse, um, suicide, um, suicide prevention, um, depression, anxiety. All. However, when I did my master's, I emphasize, my master's emphasize on suicide prevention. Okay. Yeah, I know uh, uh, folks have been saying with, with COVID, it's been a challenge and, uh, you know, with people getting depressed and so forth. So I'm sure your phone's been ringing off the, uh, the hook um, for, for counseling. Not my phone, but messages, messages, okay. you know, uh, on Facebook messaging, um, emails, that sort. Yeah, it's, it has been... A lot. It has been a lot. It has been a lot. And indeed, people long before COVID, people were struggling. And, and then the COVID just, you know, it's like the icing on the cake for everybody. Mm. So I'm going to lighten it up just for a bit here. Um, if I was to visit St. Martin, what would be that thing you'd say, Xavier, you have to go see this or... Maybe it's an event. You're going to say you have to go to this event. Okay, what? yeah. So there are two things um, that I highly recommend because I love it. Um, and that's watching the airplane um, take off and land. And this is actually on the Dutch side, you know. So I live on the French side. But the, the major airport is on the Dutch side. And um, tourists, you know, even though they're wanting not to, the, the, the fun for them is to go exactly behind the air that where the plane is taking off and you know grab onto the fence and have the, the the wind that breeze from the airplane blow them away into the ocean people actually died from that you not believe Ooh. but yeah wow. because it's, it's yeah and it's you know now they're there they're, the authorities are taking more precaution you know so no one can get too close however that's one of the the attraction also, the Sunset Cruise, the Sunset Cruise, um, yeah, I love the Sunset Cruise. Yeah, I love yeah. the Sunset Cruise. You must. It's a must. It's a must. <laughs> so what is your typical long weekend? What do you enjoy doing? Apart from those two attractions, you know, you said, you know, maybe I love to just drive here or I just love to relax in my backyard or what? what, what is a long weekend for you? Okay, so, you know, I'm very much a homebody person, you know, so I would stay home and read a lot. I read a lot, especially um, because of what I am in. You know, I look at a lot of documentary and, you know, you know, read a lot of books about depression, anxiety, relationship, um, children. You know, I, I love reading. So for me, other than that, um, I don't, I love going to the beach, you know, not swimming, but laying down on the chair with my cocktail and my book. And yeah, that's it. All right. Well, Georgia, we're, we're winding down. Thank you very much for, for spending some time. So here is, here is my first scenario. 
or the only scenario, you land in Jamaica, you get off the plane, what is that first thing that you're doing? First thing me gonna do is get that sorrel beer or that lemon beer. First, first thing. <laughs> <laughs> so you you don't the very first thing, the sorrel beer or the lemon beer, but one of them beer, yes, and a nice piece of jerk chicken. Mm. <laughs> So you're not, you, you, don't yes. have a, you don't have a nice Jamaican restaurant there or a couple of them? They do have a lot of Jamaican restaurants, yes. However, it's just not the same as when you're home, you're there, Jamaican, you eat from, you know, it, it's just not the same vibe. It's not the same feeling. It's not the same joy. It's not the same satisfaction. It's just not the same as when you're on your soil, on the Jamaican soil, and you're eating this thing, and you, you know, drinking a coconut water, and your patty or your East Indian mango, my God! <laughs> <laughs> so I, I can see the order already: the beer, the sorrel beer, the the coconut water, and the yeah, patty, the jerk chicken. The jerk chicken. <laughs> yeah. yeah, oh yeah, that's it. So how would the locals say goodbye? Uh, to tell her. Tatella. To tell her. No. To tell her. To tell her. Oh, or, or you can say au revoir. Okay. Au revoir. Au revoir. Yeah. Au revoir. But Tatella, Tatella is so like one locals mostly uses Tatella. Yeah. To tell her means see you later. To tell her. All right. Well, Georgia, thank you, thank you, thank you for spending some time with us. And to tell her. I have to tell her, thank you for having me. Show some love now. Hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell. That way you don't miss a video.